Good evening, Richland County, and welcome to your Monday edition of Live at Five. I'm Russell Parker. A woman is facing an open uh, count of murder and other charges, according to Richmond County Jail Records. Records show 26-year-old Alicia Sweet Williams was booked into the Richmond County Jail without bond on the murder charge on Sunday. She is also being held on a $10,000 secured bond for failure to appear on a misdemeanor. On Monday, Williams was charged with possession of a firearm by a felon and given an additional $25,000 secured bond. According to a press release issued late Monday morning, the Sheriff's Office received a call from the Richmond County 911 Center in reference to a person possibly killed on the Lumbee Lane west of Hamlet. When deputies responded, they found the body of 25-year-old Tyler Williams deceased inside his residence, according to the release. Alicia Williams was taken into custody and later charged. According to the release, Tyler Williams' body has been sent to the medical examiner's office in Raleigh to determine an official cause of death. One local bondsman is on the hunt for an accused bell jumper. Lloyd Rainwater on Friday posted 10 wanted posters around Richmond County, offering a reward for information leading to the location and arrest of Benny Lee Henson Jr. According to Rainwater, Henson failed to appear in Richmond County Superior Court three months ago on a charge of obtaining property by false pretenses. The bail bondsman said he put up $7,000 for Henson to be released from jail, but when Henson didn't show up in court, Rainwater received a notice to have the defendant in court within 150 days or else he loses that bond. He has six weeks left. Rainwater said he received a call last week that Henson was in downtown Rockingham. When he drove to the location, he said he saw Henson in a vehicle, but the defendant jumped out and ran into Rockingham First United Methodist Church. The bondsman said he then called 911 to get assistance from the Rockingham Police Department, but Henson slipped away. A reward of $100 is being offered to anyone who can give information leading to Henson's arrest. Richmond Community College held Girls Exploring Engineering, exposing young girls to various fields of engineering through fun, hands-on activities. More than 30 girls ranging in age from 2nd grade to 10th grade completed four different activities that introduced them to 3D printing, app development, electronics, and robotics. All activities were led by women instructors with backgrounds in engineering or technology. During their lunch break, the girls also heard from three young women who pursued or are pursuing careers in traditionally male-dominated fields. All the girls who attended the event last Saturday received a t-shirt that says, Future Engineer. The Richmond Observer staff was honored with eight awards Thursday evening by the North Carolina Press Association during the 2020 Winter Convention. The RO competed against other internet-only publications in the NCPA's online division, winning first place in general excellence for websites. Sports editor Kyle Pillar can now add award-winning journalists to his resume after bringing home three individual awards, including both first and third place for sports feature writing. The top prize was for Pillar's story on Malik Covington, at the time a Washington Street fifth grader who ran in the final touchdown during the last spring training scrimmage game in May. An entry of photos and video by managing editor William R. Toller and contributing photographer Wally Reeves from the inaugural Epicenter Festival snagged third place in the multimedia project category. Toller's video skills also earned a second place win for best video. Highlights from the annual Special Olympics torch run when a dog joined law enforcement officers the second half of the route ending at Hitchcock Creek. For writing, Toller earned two other third place nods for editorials and business writing. When we return, we've got your Live at Five weather report. It's coming up right after the break, so stay tuned. Do you want a healthcare career? Certified medical assistants are multi-skilled healthcare professionals capable of completing administrative and clerical tasks, making them a valuable member of the healthcare team at medical clinics, doctor's offices, and other healthcare facilities. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, the employment of medical assistants is projected to grow 23% over the next eight years, much faster than the national average. At Richmond Community College, our medical assisting students are trained in our cutting-edge simulation learning center, giving them hands-on experience with high-fidelity mannequins that simulate real-life patient interaction. 
In addition to clinical skills, our students also receive instruction in scheduling appointments, coding, processing insurance accounts, billing, collections, and medical transcription. Complete the medical assisting program in just two years and start your lifelong career today. Visit www.richmondcc.edu to learn more about enrolling in the medical assisting program at Richmond Community College or call 910-410-1700. At Richmond County Hospice, we strive to provide high quality care to our patients and their families. Whether it's the incredible hospitality at the Haven House or from the comfort of your own home, you can count on hospice to be there for you. We also offer monthly grief support groups and our chaplain will be there to hold your hand in prayer. Through our amazing staff and our volunteers, hospice has made difficult times easier for our community. Call the number on your screen if you feel that you or your loved one may benefit from our services. Richmond County Hospice, peace, comfort, dignity. Your Live at 5 weather report is brought to you by R.O. Yellow, Richmond County's new online business directory. Happy Monday, everyone. Hope you had a great weekend. And it was pretty cold and really windy on some parts today, especially Saturday afternoon. It was really, really windy, uh, but it got cold really quickly as well because of all that wind. Uh, otherwise, though, it's a pretty nice weekend, not a whole lot of overcast. We did see some sunshine, actually quite a bit of sunshine uh, throughout the weekend. Uh, today has been about the same, but clouds are returning tonight. 7 o'clock, 59 degrees. 10 o'clock, 57. Uh, it's going to be really, really cloudy tonight. Let's take a look at the tomorrow. That's in preparation for the rain that is coming to the Sand Hills region. Across the entire Sand Hills area, you're going to be seeing rain everywhere. In Fayetteville, it'll be a high of 64, low of 55. In Rayford, it's going to be a high of 65, low of 55 there. In Lumberton, it'll be a high of 66, low of 56. Down in Scotland County, it'll be a high of uh, 66, a low of 55. Up in Southern Pines will be a high of 65, low of 55. And then LRB will be saying a high of 65, low of 53. Down in Rockingham and Hamlet will be a high of 65, low of 53 as well. Venezuela will be seeing a high of 65, low of 56. And across the PD in Waysboro, it'll be a high of 64 and low of 54. So about a 10 degree difference uh, between most of these cities here uh, will be in play tomorrow. So you're expecting mid 60s and mid 50s really really warm now we're getting into march uh, it is beginning of the new month and uh are we still expecting to see some 70 degree weather let's take a look at seven day forecast to find out right now we're not seeing any 70s popping up just yet uh tuesday will be a high of 65 low of 53 with showers pretty much all day long uh 70 percent chance in the afternoon uh 50 in the evening and then those uh those precipitations uh chances will drop down a little bit on wednesday be a high of 65 low of 50 and you can see 40% chance in the afternoon, 50% chance in the evening. And on Thursday, those, uh, those percentages go back up again. It'll be a high of 53, low of 44, with a 70% chance of precipitation, with 50% chance once again in the evening. On Friday, it'll be part of cloudy skies once again. It'll be a high of 58 and a low of 34. And then on Saturday, it'll be sunny all day long. Once again, another great weekend. Despite it being a little bit chilly, another sunny, clear weekend ahead. Saturday, high of 53, low of 31. Then on Sunday, it'll be sunny skies once more with a high of 59 and a low of 37. And on Monday, uh, starting off about the same as what we saw today, it'll be a high of 65 and a low of 48 with party cloudy skies. Uh, overall, not a bad round of the next seven days for us here, uh, here in Richmond County and the Sand Hills region. Yes, rain is on the way for the next couple of days, but the weekend's looking promising once again. That's three weekends in a row that have been looking very promising. And that's going to do it for your Wi-Fi weather report. When we return, we've got your RO Sports update. It's on the way right after this, so stay tuned. McNair Auto Sales is the place to buy your pre-owned car, truck, or van. To be the best, it takes big selection, friendly staff, and great pricing. We guarantee a no-hassle buying experience, and financing is available right on site. So come see us today. We're located at 1026 East Broad Avenue in Rockingham. And remember, with over 40 years of experience, you know McNair is the name you can trust. JC's in Rockingham has you covered for used appliances, parts, trailers, and storage. We have one of the largest selections of reconditioned washers, dryers, and refrigerators in the Sand Hills, and we offer free delivery to residents inside Richmond County. Come check out our variety of trailers for any hauling job and our storage buildings for the things you need out of the weather or house. 
We also carry parts and accessories for appliances, trailers, truck beds, and can order the things you need. That's JC's on South Hancock Street in Rockingham. Hometown heroes? Well, maybe. When it comes to backyard comfort and no pesky mosquitoes, call Brown Termite and Pest Control at 910-895-6410 or 910-276-8870. Their team of superheroes can take back control of your paradise. That's 910-895-6410 today. The scores of Saturday's two scrimmages weren't to focus for the Richmond girls soccer team. Battling the blustery conditions at Hope County Jamboree, the Lady Raiders and head coach Chris Larson competed in two preseason games against Grace Creek and Pernell Sweat. Playing two 20-minute halves in each contest, the Lady Raiders split with the Lady Bears and the Lady Rams. Richmond fell short 2-0 against Grace Creek while three different goal scorers helped them defeat conference opponent Pernell Sweat 3-1. Larson explained the scores weren't indicative of how his team will play this season, although he was pleased with the effort given by his 23-player roster. Between the 80 minutes of combined playing time, Larson played and mo moved nearly all of his players around to different positions on the field. The Lady Raiders had a film session Saturday night and will use that as a final preparation for the regular season opener Monday at non-conference Southern League. The game is set for 6.30 p.m. Having a busy start to the new season, it's first year head coach Rob Ransom and the Raider baseball team. Also in action will be the JV team and head coach Corey Wallace. Both teams open at home on Monday tonight against Anson. The two teams will split up Tuesday with the varsity team traveling to non-conference Cape Fear and JV hosting the Colts at home. Closing the week at home on Saturday, Richmond will welcome in two more non-conference opponents in Ashley and E.A. Laney High Schools at noon and 4 p.m. In tennis action, the Raiders and third-year head coach Patrick Hope will start their new season with two matches this week. They will travel to SAC opponent 71st on Tuesday and host rival Scotland in their home opener on Thursday. Both matches are set for 4 p.m. Head coach softball Mike Way and the Varsity Lady Raiders will begin their quest to win an eighth straight SAC title on Tuesday at Southwestern Randolph. The JV Lady Raiders and head coach Jordan Fortune will also play the Lady Cougars at 5 p.m. A night later, Richmond will host its home opener against another non-conference opponent, welcoming in Uwari at 6 p.m. Both teams will round out the week on Thursday at Anson, seeing the JV team start at 5 p.m followed by the varsity team at 7. The final team to open this week will be the Richmond girls track and field team competing at the Reed Ross Invitational. Head coach Reggie Miller and the Lady Raiders are slated to begin competition at 9 a.m. And that's going to do it for tonight's edition of Live at 5. Of course, for the latest news, sports, and events happening here in Richmond County, you can always visit richmondobserver.com or download the free R app for your mobile devices. For the Live 5 crew, I'm Russell Parker. Thanks for watching and we'll see you tomorrow. Good night, Richmond County.